Hey kids, it's time to go around the world with Cool School. Let's start with Super Drew's Kangaroo Adventure down under in Australia. Good day, mate. It's time for a brand new adventure with the stupendous Drew Pendus and his mighty pet ultimate. In today's episode, Drew battles the monster and saves the koala bears. Thanks, Drew. It was just a typical, totally normal day of cool school. Drew and Nikki were at the computer lab, hard at work. Okay, maybe not so hard at work. Hey, it's Amy, my pen pal from Australia. Cool. Hey, Amy, what's up? Drew, it's an emergency. All the koalas are disappearing. Oh no, I love koalas, they're so cute. Think the koala bears are just hibernating? Koalas aren't actually bears, they're marsupials and they don't hibernate. Exactly. Drew, I think someone or something is taking them. Maybe it's a dingo. Oh, I think it's something bigger. Can you help? I'm on my way. Hold on, koalas. Super Drew is coming to the rescue. With his best friend, Nikki? Yes, along with my best friend, Nikki. Australia is all the way on the other side of the world. How are we going to get there? With my ginormous rocket laser boots, we'll be there in seconds. Let's go. Whoa, it's nighttime here. Because Australia is on the other side of the Earth from us, we have day when we have night. It's all about the rotation of the Earth. And because That's of interesting, Earth, but we have to save the koalas. Oh, right. Hey, guys. Hey, Amy. I hope our rocket laser shoes weren't too loud. No? Nope. Let's go to the forest. There are still some koalas in the eucalyptus trees, so we might catch our culprit. Wait, let's switch out the rocket laser boots with kangaroo legs. Awesome. What about a kangaroo's super strong boxing arms? What? Kangaroos have tiny arms like a T-Rex. Drew, let me show you a pic of an alpha kangaroo. Ah! Alpha kangaroos look so tough. Yeah, I better draw some kangaroo arms too. And the pouch! Well, the kangaroos don't have pouches. This one does. I need a place to put my penultimate. Drew, Nikki, and Amy jumped and hopped like kangaroos all the way to the eucalyptus forest. I see a koala. Cool. <coughs> Wait, what's that sound? <coughs> I think that's a platypus. Um, is it a giant platypus? Whoa, kids! A mutant animal that's part platypus, a little bit crocodile, half ostrich, a quarter frog, and 75% dingo! What is that? I think it's a bunyip. A what? Bunyips are mythical monsters said to live in the waters of Australia, but they're just pretend. Um, pretty sure this guy is real. <coughs> Back off, you bunyip bully. How about this? <coughs> The bunyip blocked Drew's punch with his flipper. Okay, how about my mighty kangaroo kicks? Then he blocked Drew's kick with his ostrich wing. You've got me again, bunyip, but this time you're going down. You're useless against my pouch of unlimited joeys. Aw, oh, baby kangaroos. They're so cute. And they're pretty good at boxing. <laughs> Whoa, baby joeys to the rescue. But what happened? It's like the bunyip ran out of batteries or something. The gang got closer to investigate, but... Stop! Don't touch it! Who are you? I'm Indra Nier. I built and programmed this robot. This is a robot? Wow! Are you an evil mastermind? Well, not really evil. I just really love koalas. All of them. I want all of them. But I didn't want to get caught, so I built this bunyip robot to do all the dirty work. It's really bad to steal animals from their habitats, though. Yeah, you can't take things that aren't yours. That's stealing. But how does this thing work? It's programmed to recognize cuteness. Hey, a lot of people think I'm cute. Why didn't that stop it? Maybe the kangaroo arms? Yeah, these are too tough to be cute. So, what are you anyway? Me? Oh, I'm a superhero. I came to save the koalas. No big deal. You do know you're gonna have to release all the animals you took back into the wild. I know, I know. I took a few wombats and wallabies too. Will you guys help me? Aw, cute. I mean, yeah, we'll help. So, the whole gang worked the rest of the night, letting all the animals out and back into the wild. And Indra realized it's not good to mess with animals in their habitat, no matter how cute they are. And Nikki, Drew, and Amy made a new friend slash, not actually evil, science genius mastermind. It was a happy ending. Moral of the story, kids. Don't program your robots to steal koalas, even if they are really super cute and adorable. And never make fun of a kangaroo's little arms. Hi, everybody. 
I was just getting ready for one of my favorite days of the year, Earth Day. <laughs> Who's that for? The Earth, duh. It's the Earth's birthday. I almost couldn't fit all the candles on the cake. Earth Day isn't the Earth's birthday. It's not? Nope. Earth Day is a special day each year that reminds us that we must take care of the Earth. Well, the Earth is kind of huge. Don't we all have to take care of it? Who celebrates Earth Day? Well, Ricky, almost everybody. Let's go. Where? On an Earth Day world tour. First stop, Tokyo. In Tokyo, they celebrate Earth Day with the big festival in the streets. People come from all over Japan to celebrate the Earth and learn ways to go green. Go green? Like Shrek? No, silly. Going green means making changes to the way you live, some big and some small, in order to be kinder to your environment. Got it. Where to next? South Africa. In South Africa and many other countries, they call Earth Day Mother Earth Day to celebrate the relationship between us and the Earth. So Earth Day is still a huge party, but it's more like Mother's Day. In Brazil, you can adopt an acre of rainforest with a simple donation. Wow! In Hungary, everyone rides their bicycles. In Madagascar, they have a big carnival to celebrate the Earth's big day. In the U.S., lots of people go to the park and plant baby trees called saplings. What's wrong, Ricky? What am I supposed to do with all this cake? Oh, wait, I know. Here's three things you or anyone can do to help keep the Earth clean and healthy. Number one, use a reusable water bottle to help reduce waste caused by plastic bottles. Well, that's easy. Number two, when you brush your teeth, turn the water off while you're brushing. You could save up to five whole gallons of water each day. That's a lot. And number three, turn the lights off whenever you leave a room to save energy. And remember, like our friends around the world say, Mother Earth takes care of us, so we must take care of her. Look, Ma, I'm keeping it clean. <laughs> Looks like I won't ground you, Ricky. This time. <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time, long, long ago, there lived a totally awesome dude named Aladdin. Oh, wow, hey, I'm a totally awesome dude named Aladdin. <laughs> awesome, yes but also very unlucky. Huh? Aladdin was always getting into trouble, like the time he accidentally stowed away on a pirate ship. Uh, oh, uh, that's a long way down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like your hat. <laughs> or like the time he got swallowed by a whale. Oh, they got you too, huh? No, I quite like it in here. Yeah, I don't believe you. Or, like this one time, he almost met a really cool princess, which, by the way, was a huge no-no. You see, the princess's father was a very bad king, and he wouldn't let the princess even talk to any of the poor townspeople. But Aladdin bravely walked up and said, Hi, I'm Aladdin, and you must be Princess... <laughs> oh, a tiger! A tiger! A tiger! Run, Aladdin, run! <laughs> <laughs> if only I could find a clever place to hide. Whoa, hey! <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, a cave. Huh. That was close. <laughs> Aladdin quietly crept further into the cave just to be totally 100% sure that the tiger couldn't find him. Only problem was, it was... Dark! Who turned out the lights? Jeez, I can't even see my... Whoa! I wish I had a nightlight. Did somebody say, I wish? <laughs> wow, how did that happen? Woo, hey, who are you? I am a genie, but you can call me Bob. You, uh, you fell on my lamp, must have uh, rubbed it a little bit, because that's how these things work. Oh, and bonus, I'm also a magician. Want to see me pull a rabbit out of my hat? Oh yeah, I love magic. Alakazambra Kapow. <laughs> uh, rabbit spell go. Hola, kids. Bunny Kazam! Ah, oh, put it back in there! Put it back in there! Put it back in there! Oh, 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 sorry, put it sorry. Back in there. It's a small cave. Sorry. I still have my learner's permit, but rest assured, I am a wonderful genie. Granting wishes is my speciality. Oh, and you have two more wishes, by the way. Two more wishes? Mm -hmm. Sounds. But. 
Be careful what you wish for. Not every wish is a good one. Like that kid that wished for non-stop pizza. Ugh, too much pizza. Well, I'm going to wish for true love with the most beautiful girl in the world. The princess. She's so cool. I heard she has a trampoline and a pool and a golden retriever and an Xbox. She's so neat. Wait, I can't just show up looking like this. She's a princess and I'm just a poor boy from a poor family. So even if you cast your love spell, everyone will see that I'm not a rich prince. And they'll know my real secret, Genie. Well, you still got two wishes left. Number one, Wish to be rich. Number two, wish for the princess to love you. And three, please call me Bob. <laughs> oh, sure, Bob. No worries. Oh, this is just all wrong. I want her to like me for me. I'm just gonna wish to get a chance to hang out with her. <laughs> I wish. Uh, be careful what you wish for. I wish for a chance to hang out with the princess. <laughs> <laughs> You wish to hang out with the princess, so you're hanging out. Ah, uh, yes. Aladdin has just wished to hang out with the princess. And as you can see, they're quite literally hanging out. You wish to hang out with the princess, so you're hanging out. Well, I didn't mean to hang out the window. <sighs> Don't get mad at me. Next time, be more specific. <sighs> Um, hello, a little less talking, a little more rescuing. Uh, oh, sorry, um, I'll save you, princess. <sighs> okay, huh? how do I do that, Bob? A little help here. Well, I have to say, I wish. <sighs> and use my last wish? Well, you could try some magic. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Alakazam! Uh, huh? Oh, there's my bunny. Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, abracadabra! That's not right. Oh, oh, I wish I could save Aladdin and the princess. <laughs> okay, that worked. Cool. I did not know I could grant my own wishes. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so crazy. Oh, totally. It's so weird. I have <laughs> no idea how that happened. <laughs> Wait a minute, I recognize you. I, I've seen you before. You're Aladdin. <gasps> and who is this? Oh, 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 oh no, oh no, the jig is up. Uh, 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 he's a genie, uh, and his name is Bob, and he... And so Aladdin explains the whole situation about Bob the genie and the wishes. He told the princess he really just wanted to get to know her and hang out and probably play video games just for a bit. Maybe use the castle pool and water slide and trampoline for a few times. No big deal, but he really just wanted her to like him. And I understand if you want me to leave. <laughs> oh, I suppose I can use my last wish to just get out of here if that's what you want. Wait, you have a last wish? Yeah. <gasps> hey, we could share the wish. Huh, anything you want to do. We could go to Egypt and see the pyramids or go to Mars or to Disneyland or... <gasps> Whoa. What if I wish that we could fly around the world on a magic carpet ride? Gee, imagine that. A totally different place. Well, how about we wish that we could get married? Well, you could never marry a poor guy like me. Yes, I could. I think you're a total prince, and I don't care what anyone else says. Um, I'm not really supposed to help you think of wishes, but it seems like you two could uh, think about getting married later and then use that wish now to do something super duper crazy fun. I kind of like that Disney World idea. Have you guys ever been to Space Mountain? Oh yes, that's perfect. Thanks, Bob. Oh yeah, we owe you one. Okay, cool. Hey, does this mean I get to go to Disney with you? They get this whole new Frozen section. I am so there. Miss Booksy? Miss Booksy? Can I be in the story now? I want to go to Disneyland with Aladdin and the princess, too. <laughs> sure, of course you can. Let's go. Just wiggle your nose and snap your fingers like this. I have to bring my little sister, Katie. She loves Disney. Yeah! <laughs> we can go to the Bippity Boppity Boutique. Ha, we, ha, I'll be at the Hall of Presidents. 
And that's how it all went down, kids. Aladdin and the princess, they really liked each other. They didn't need any love spells or riches. They were like two peas in a pod. They were like ice cream and hot fudge. They were like hamburgers and pickles. <laughs> Pizza and liver. Yeah. Okay, fine, you get the idea. They liked each other. And this is the best part, kids. They all lived happily ever after. The end. Get ready for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendus and his mighty penultimate. In today's episode, Drew's gonna battle the dragons and save Icicle, the coolest place ever. But like literally, the coolest place. It was story time at cool school and Miss Booksy was getting ready to read to the class. But this wasn't just any story time. It's Animal Week, kids, and you know what that means. Ooh, ooh, I know. That means we get to learn about all our favorite animals and see where they live and what they eat and how they sleep and who their friends are and, and, and... Shh! Finn, I told you, you gotta keep it down if you want to come to story time with me. Kids, you remember Finn? Drew's awesome sidekick and sidekick who helped save the ocean from the giant seaweed monster and a gang of super mean pirates. Well, this time Drew sketched him his very own tank. Now he can be a sidekick wherever he goes. What have I got him myself into? That's right, Finn. We're going to learn all about animals and we're starting with yetis. That's why I brought in a special guest. Class, meet Pip, the yeti. Flying fish tails. I always wanted to meet a real life yeti. This is the most awesome day ever. Shh. Pip is from a small town called Icicle. He's going to read us lots of stories about his friends and family. I'll tell you everything you want to know, but I gotta warn you, it's been a rough time for my family back home. What's the matter, Pip? Is everything okay? Well, the ice cream man gets his ice from Ivan the ice maker. Freshest ice in all of Icicle. And he was saying he might go out of business soon because all the ice has started melting. Yikes! Ice melting in Icicle? Yep. Pretty soon my mom and pop and little sis will have to pack up and move. Homeless yetis, that is so sad. There's gotta be a way to keep the ice from melting and I'm gonna figure it out. Woohoo! Hero Drew and sidekick Finn, take two. The dynamic duo blazing the trail, conquering the world, going where none of them. Yeah, yeah, okay, we get it. Wow, this guy's a yapper. Don't make him like that where I come from. Drew whipped out his mighty penultimate and drew super cool propellers. You know, the kind they have on helicopters. There you go. Now you'll be able to fly right beside me every step of the way. Well, 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 I can fly! Okay, Finn, we've got work to do. Drew pulled out his penultimate and drew an awesome flying sled, which he used to fly him and Finn up, up, up in the air to Icicle. Whoa! Pip was right. All the ice is melting. Suddenly, Drew and Finn heard some music playing, but they didn't get far before a splash. Ah, help! This water's freezing. Have no fear. Sidekick Finn to the rescue. Hold on tight, Hero Drew. I'll yes. get you out of there in no time. Phew, that was close. Thanks, Finn. Glad to be a service, Hero Drew. Let's go. Strangest birds I've ever seen. Probably one of Marge's. Those puffins are no lookers. There it is. The music's coming from behind that ice rock. Hold on tight. Gonna be a steep landing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> we've got to work on that landing. Uh, uh, Hero Drew, I think we've got a bigger problem on our hands. Sure enough, standing just a short distance away was a gang of humongous, super scary, fire-breathing dragons. Aha! Looks like we solved the mystery of the melting ice. It's a bunch of dragons having a barbecue. Wow, I didn't see that coming. Don't dragons know they can't go around melting all the ice just so they can have hot dogs? I'm gonna give them a piece of my mind. Then no! Hey, dragons, you're melting all the ice and icicle with your fire breath, and soon there'll be nothing left but puddles of water, and all the yetis will have to move out and find a new home, and... and Jeez, you talk a lot for a fish. Uh, excuse us, dragons. What my friend is trying to say is that we're wondering if you could stop breathing fire and melting all the ice. Uh, I don't know. We're dragons. We breathe fire. It's kind of how we roll. That is pretty cool. We throw this barbecue every spring, usually in the desert. But this year there was a music festival going on and the desert was filled with people. So we came to Icicle where it would be quieter. Yeah, dragons have a right to a barbecue like anybody else. This is our barbecue and we'll do what we want. Watch out, Hero Drew! Drew ducked just in the nick of time. Thinking quickly, he whipped out his penultimate and drew the ultimate dragon fighting weapon, a giant water shooting machine. Fires. No match against water. You're going down, dragon. Yeah, you're all washed up. Drew used his super powerful water shooter to wash out every fireball that came his way. Until finally, the dragons just got super tired and needed a break. 
I'm hungry. Let's have a burger and pick this up later. Wait just a sec. I think there may be a better way to solve this. Then Drew pulled out his mighty pen ultimate and sketched the coolest, most awesome, high power mega barbecue grill. Where the dragons could breathe all the fire they wanted without melting the ice. This thing will fire up all your hot dogs and burgers perfectly. Ooh. Uh. Oops, that one was an accident. So this thing cooks burgers better than plain dragon breath and it's super fun to use? You got it. But you can only have it if you promise not to melt any more ice with your fire breath. You got a deal, kid. This thing is awesome. Phew, what a day. Guess we better make a way back to cool school. Hey, let me give you a ride. Least I could do after you gave us this awesome barbecue. Drew and Finn jumped into the back of their brand new dragon friend and flew way, way, way up into the sky. Ah, getting cold out here again. Looks like the heat wave is finally over. Yeah, I think the sun is getting to me too. I thought I just saw a dragon with a superhero and a fish fly by. It's definitely time to go inside. And so kids, Drew saved the day once again. Icicle finally stopped melting. The Yetis could stay in their homes and Drew got to ride on the back of a dragon. Thanks for the ride, dragon. Enjoy that barbecue. Hey, we reserved the South Pole for the 4th of July. I'll send you an invite. Catch you later. Whoa, that was the most awesome day ever. We met dragons and dodged boiling hot fireballs and chopped Oh boy. Moral of the story, kids. Always look for fire breathing dragons when your ice is melting. And make sure you've got a super cool barbecue grill. It'll make a bunch of party dragons awfully happy. Oh, and yeah, be kind to yetis. Today, we're going on a safari to learn all about animals. Shh, we don't want to spook the rare jungle beast. Uh. For the male of the species, this is a frequent ritual. Nikki! He spotted us! There's only one thing to do with a beast this angry. Ah, Nikki, what are you doing? All right, all right. Let's kick the safari up a notch and check out some real jungles. Whoa. Did you know more than half of the world's species live in the jungles all over the world? Like lions? Actually, lions may be known as the king of the jungle, but they don't live in the jungle at all. Hey, look. Shh. When on a safari, you've got to remember that the jungle is the animal's home. How would you like someone barging into your home and scaring you? <laughs> Those are chimpanzees. Chimpanzees are really smart. That is one smart monkey. Actually, chimpanzees aren't monkeys. They are great apes. I think all apes are great. No, silly. It's a term scientists use to separate chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans from gibbons. Well, I still think you're great, Mr. Gibbon. Thanks, Ricky. Hey, do any of you know Tarzan? Did someone say Tarzan? Whoa! Don't worry, Tarzan have insurance. Tarzan, come join us on our safari. Where are you headed? India. Tarzan no like India. Food too spicy. Ah! Forget the food, that's a snake. Relax, I'm Saheli, which is Hindi for friend. Hi Saheli, I'm Nikki, this is Ricky, and that's Tarzan. Nice to meet you. Look. A family of sloth bears. You know who is a sloth bear? Baloo from the Jungle Book. If you haven't seen Miss Booksy read the Jungle Book yet, make sure to catch that episode. The Jungle Book is one of her favorite stories, and mine too. You know Miss Booksy? She's our teacher. I'll tell her you say hi all the way from India, but only if you tell Mowgli I say hi. We will. Bye. And now my favorite. We're in Australia. Some species in Australia aren't found anywhere else in the world. Is that dinosaur? Close! It's a southern cassowary, and it is one of the closest living species to an actual dinosaur. I have a very old soul. There must be thousands of different animals in the jungle. Yes, we have great diversity program. Actually, there are millions of different animal species in the jungle. Like in Zootopia? Yeah! All different animals living in harmony together. Oh, that remind me. Tarzan must go home. Tonight, laundry night. Let's see. That'll do. Whoa! I'm okay. Wow, Nikki, this was awesome. How about you be the explorer this time? And I'll be the jungle animal. The big sister is one of the rarest species in the jungle. It's time for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendis and his mighty pen ultimate. 
In today's episode, Drew time travels to ancient Egypt. Now kids, be sure to keep a lookout for these shiny gold coins hidden in today's episode. Tell us in the comments below how many you found. It was field trip day at cool school, and Drew and his buddies visited the museum so they could learn all about Egypt. Drew, who is your mummy? Ah, the mummy! It's alive! <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen your face. Ah, uh, it's alive! <laughs> you wouldn't have survived a day in real Egypt. Not funny, Ella. You know you're not supposed to mess with mummies, or they come to haunt you. Some even steal your favorite sneakers. I'll share my sneakers with a mummy any day. They don't scare me. Hey guys, look! The famous Egyptian Sphinx! It's true, the nose is missing. Legend has it, it's still hidden somewhere in Egypt, and whoever finds it will be granted any wish they want. No way, like a trip to the Bahamas, or world peace, or an Xbox? Yep, anything you like. That's the rumor anyway. All right kids, come on, time for the next exhibit. Ooh, I wonder who crafted that lovely headpiece. Hmm, the legend sure does sound cool. I've always wanted to go to Egypt. Maybe if I just... Then Drew gets the awesomest time machine ever. Drew, we're all waiting for... Hey, what's going on here? Oh, uh, I was just uh, hanging out in this time machine. Whoa, you're going back in time to ancient Egypt to track down the missing nose and get granted any wish you want and go down in history forever, aren't you? Uh, maybe. Well, not without me, you aren't. So off they went, way, way, way back in time until BAM! They finally arrived in ancient Egypt, just as the Great Sphinx was being built. Hey look, up there! Someone was standing on top of the Sphinx. Drew pulled out his penultimate and sketched a giant bucket of dried leaves. What? Camels like this stuff. Uh, you don't fly, do you? They flew way, way up to the tippity top of the Sphinx. Wait a minute, I thought the Sphinx didn't have a nose. Uh-oh, something didn't smell right, kids. The evil Ray Blank? I should have known he was behind this. <laughs> Stop right there, evil Ray. You can't just erase noses off of Sphinxes. That's super not cool. Oh yeah? Who's gonna stop me? Ray jumped down into a tunnel. Drew and Ella were hot on his heels. Boo! Ah! Huh. Give up yet? Quick, we can't let him get away. First darkness, now frogs. What's next? Of course, locusts. This Egypt place is crazy. Come on, this way. They finally reached the end of the long, dark tunnel when Drew spotted a giant mummy case. Um, I think it's alive. And I think I have an idea. Uh... Whoa, whoa, whoa! Let me out of here. You're not done with me yet. You'll pay for this. Let me out! Phew, that was a close one. Um, where are my sneakers? Uh, I told you not to mess with mummies. Uh, Drew? Run! We better get out of here. Drew sketched a giant elevator that he used to lift them way up to the top of the tunnel and back onto the top of the Sphinx. Nice work, Drew. Where have you two been? You missed all the cool stuff we learned about Egypt. You know, I never noticed that the Sphinx had such a pronounced nose. Well, kids, Drew saved the day once again. Ray Blank was captured in a mummy case, and the Sphinx finally got a nose. Kinda. We may have to fix that. Moral of the story, boys and girls, try time traveling the next time you're looking for a missing nose. And be sure not to mess with mummies. They're notorious sneaker takers. And I hope you didn't forget to count those gold coins. Let's see how many you can find. Found number one. And there's two. Ooh, found a third. There's another one. That makes four. And hope you didn't miss number five hidden just over there. If you found all five, let us know below. 
There we go. So as I was saying, my name is Cindy, kind of like Cinderella, <laughs> which is what my not so nice stepmother and stepsisters call me. I had to go live with them in a dark, cold place called Europe, where they have castles and princes and stuff like that. But I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> They're always making me do all the chores. Like, it's normal for kids to help out with the dishes, feed the dog, clean her room, and stuff. But they made me do everything all day long. I'm cleaning toilets, tying their hair bows, ironing their socks. Well, seriously, who needs their socks ironed? My only solace was my cat fry ball. <laughs> and since my stepsisters were allergic, I had to keep them outside. <gasps> and it can get wicked cold in Europe. One day, an invitation arrived. The prince was having a grand ball and everyone was invited. I finally had something to be happy about. Fryball and I did a little dance. But my evil stepmother told me there was no way I could go. You have to clean the bathroom floor that night. Duh, it's Friday. She was right. Friday was tub and toilet night. Friday came and my lousy stepsisters put on their lousy new dresses and strutted out to the ball while I got out my scrub bucket and brush and got to cleaning. I'm gonna be honest, I cried. <laughs> Just a little. Don't be sad. Cheer up. Thanks, kids. Look, a fairy. <gasps> she said, don't be scared. I'm your fairy godmother. I didn't know I had a fairy godmother. Oh, OK, so that explains why you never call or visit, send me an email, edible bouquet. Now stop your crying. Let's get you to the ball. Well, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm kind of cleaning the bathroom. It's tub and toilet night, and I don't have a dress. Oh, please, stand still. <laughs> wow, pretty. Now you'll find your limo outside. I did a little wand action on an old jack-o'-lantern for that one, and Fryball is your chauffeur. Uh, now off you go. Oh, wait, one thing. You gotta get home by midnight. That is so important. I can't stress the importance here. There's always a catch with these spells. And just like that, I was on my way to the ball. Woo! It was the most fun party ever. Snacks galore. They had a chocolate fountain, an eight foot meatball sub, awesome music, a conga line, a wee, karaoke, foosball. It was magical. I met the coolest guy in the world. We played bowling on Wii. We ate nachos. And we realized we had the same taste in like everything. We like the same color. Red. red. The same food. Cheese doodles. doodles. The same movies. But, but the, the best, best one, one is Toy, Toy Story, Story 3. 3. Jinx, you, you owe me a coat. <laughs> Even the same taste in shoes. <gasps> Sneakers to a ball? It's midnight, y'all. Eek! I didn't have time for goodbyes. I made a run for it. Bye! I forgot to ask her name. Oh, I always get something wrong. By the time I got back to my limo, it had turned back into a jack-o'-lantern and Fryball back into a regular cat. I was back into my regular clothes and somehow I had ran right out of one of my sneakers. With one shoe and Fryball by my side, I walked home. The next day, there was a breaking news announcement from the prince that he had met a great girl at the ball who would make a great princess, but he didn't know who she was. I must find her. All I have is this... This shoe. And I will canvas the land and find the foot that fits this sneaker. I really think she might be the coolest girl in the whole world. Say what? I was hanging out with the prince? Whoa, this was an interesting turn.
turn. My stepsisters argued over which one of them it was. It was great. Little did they know, it was me. But when the prince and his prince people came round to do the test fitting, my stepmom sent me out back to wash the windows. I watched as my stepsisters both tried to squeeze their big feet into my shoe. Then he saw me. Hey, what about her? Please, will you try on this shoe? when my stepmother and stepsisters screamed and passed out. They didn't handle shock very well. I'm, um, I'm Ron Charming. Hi, I'm Cindy. You, you owe me a Coke. Coke. Jinx, you now owe me another Coke. Coke. Jinx, Jinx, now you owe me another, another Coke. Coke. Jeez. That went on for quite a while. And then we lived pretty darn happily ever after from that day on. It was a real Cinderella story. Hey guys, it's me, Nikki, and it's time for a new Nikki's Wiki. Today's report is all about zoo animals. A zoo is a place where you can see animals from all over the world. I like zoos where the animals roam free in big open spaces with lots of plants and other animals to play with. There's one like that being built in Europe called Zootopia. Hey, just like the movie. Zoos have been around longer than you might think. All the way back in 1500 BC, a queen named Hatshepsut opened a zoo in Egypt. And ancient Greeks had zoos so that they could study the animals. Now. Let's fast forward about a thousand years to Austria in the 1700s, where an emperor built a zoo that's still open today. That makes it the oldest zoo in the world. That zoo was originally a gift for the emperor's wife. Oh, I love zoos. Hold on, a whole zoo? Awesome. Back then, there was no internet, no TV, no airplanes, and no wikis. So, zoos were really the only way for people to experience wildlife from other parts of the world. But this is a wiki, and we can go anywhere we want. So, let's travel the world and see these wild animals in their natural habitats. It's time for a worldwide safari. This is the savanna, home to one of my favorite animals of all time, the African elephant. Elephants are amazing. They are super smart. Oh shucks and can communicate from miles away by sending vibrations through the earth. Did you just feel the floor shake? Okay, let's head to the Congo where my favorite ape lives. Introducing the bonobo. Bonobos are close cousins to the chimpanzee. Fun fact, bonobos laugh when they're tickled. <laughs> Cut it out, I'm ticklish. Now let's travel to Antarctica. Hello. Burr, it's cold. But that's good. It needs to be cold for the penguins who live here. Penguins are super cool. They're birds, but they don't fly. Instead, they swim. They also waddle, jump, and slide. Best thing about penguins, though, is that they look like they're wearing tuxedos. Fancy penguins. Where to next? I know. Let's go to China and see the giant panda. Some do still live in the wild. They mostly eat bamboo. Yep, pandas kind of look like they have eye patches like pirates. Arr! Next up, the Amazon rainforest of South America. That's where the toucan lives. The toucan is a colorful bird with a beak that's almost as big as its body. Toucans eat fruit and insects. Here, have a crunchy beetle. Ah, uh, no thanks. Last stop on a real life zoo adventure, let's go to St. Helena Island. That's where the world's oldest living animal is. Meet Jonathan, the 184-year-old tortoise. He was actually given to the governor as a gift in the 1800s, back when people did things like that. Open your present, George. Why, it's a giant tortoise. How grand. Now open yours, Penelope. Oh, it's a tiger. To sum up my report, zoos have been around for a long, long time because humans have always been interested in animals and 
because, well, animals are awesome. But we have to remember that animals deserve our respect, especially when they're also our elders. That's right, you little whippersnapper. Hi, everybody. It's me, Nikki, with a brand new Nikki's Wiki. This is my cool school report on the year of the monkey. <laughs> Sounds awesome, right? I love monkeys. They're so cute and funny, and who doesn't like bananas? But some of you might be thinking, year of the monkey? What does that even mean? Is Earth going to be taken over by monkeys like the movie Planet of the Apes? Don't worry. The year of the monkey actually has to do with the new year and the Chinese zodiac. The zodiac, or astrology, is all about where the stars and planets were way up in the sky at the moment you were born. Chinese astrology has been studied for thousands of years. So now, my friend Drew Pendus will draw a time machine to take us way back to ancient China. Hey, Drew. Hi, Nikki. OK. One time machine coming right up. Whoa! Here we are! Ancient China! Awesome! This is cool! Hey, look! These guys are studying the planets, stars, and time. It's amazing that they figured out how to study stars so long ago, before there were any spaceships. Sure is! Hey, Drew, let's go back to 2016. Huh? Aren't you a time machine and we traveled over 2,000 years just to look at some astrologists? And for an ancient Chinese selfie. My favorite part about the Chinese calendar has to be what the Chinese call the race of the 12 animals. The rat, the ox, the tiger, the rabbit, the dragon, the snake, the horse, the goat, the monkey, the rooster, the dog, and the pig. The legend is that all the animals had to race across a big river, and that's where the order comes from. The rooster, goat, and monkey all worked together by floating across in a raft. That must have been one noisy boat ride. And smelly. A lot of people believe that your personality comes from your animal sign. In China, they call that Cheng Xiao. That means birth likeness. So babies who are born in the year of the monkey will grow up to be curious, smart, and a little bit mischievous. Just like monkeys. <laughs> but people with monkey signs are not totally like real monkeys. My cousin was born in 2004, the last year of the monkey. And he lives in Omaha, Nebraska. Definitely not the jungle. And he talks like this. Hey, I'm Brian. Not like this. <laughs> he is pretty good at climbing trees, though. And he does eat a lot of bananas. OK, now let's talk about the most important Chinese New Year subject, how to celebrate. Wear red. Red is supposed to be one of the luckiest colors. So you should also choose the red piece if you play any board games. Make red paper lanterns to hang for Chinese New Year decorations and eat lots of delicious dumplings. <laughs> Don't forget to go to the Chinese New Year's Parade. You might see traditional dragon dancers. No, not actual dancing dragons, although that would be awesome. Dragon dancers are actually people who carry a big, colorful dragon figure through the parade. It's kind of like a big dragon puppet that dances. And the last tip I have for celebrating this new year is be nice. You'll get bad luck if you're not nice during the Chinese New Year. So, it's probably best to just avoid your little brother until you're done celebrating. Get ready for a brand new adventure of Drew Pendus and his mighty penultimate. Today's adventure is Drew and the Abominable Snowman. Drew is at cool school learning all about Mount Everest, the tallest mountain on Earth. As he listened, he doodled pictures of himself climbing to the top of the mountain where he would yell stuff like, Hey, I can see your bald spot. <laughs> And then listen for the echo. I can see your bones, butt. <laughs> and then ski all the way down, setting the world record for the fastest skiing ever. Then his teacher said, Mount Everest is home to many species of animals, even the endangered snow leopard. Aww. But it's also home to the mythical Yeti, ah! AKA the abominable snowman. The abominable snowman? Sounds dangerous. I bet that's what's eating all the snow leopards. 
That sounds like a job for... The Stupendous Stupendous. Uh, I mean, may I go to the restroom? Drew grabbed the bathroom keys and ran out. Okay, I'll need to fly to Nepal and then land on Everest. So I'll draw airplane wings onto my suit. In a jet engine. Oh, and a coat. It's gonna be cold. Drew was ready for blast off. He jetted out of school and halfway across the world to Mount Everest. Drew saw some hunters. Hey guys. Shh. Sorry, what you doing, hunting yetis? Yeah, be quiet, kid. Oh, cool, me too. I'm gonna save the baby snow leopards from these scary yetis. Whatever, kid. Good luck. You too, see ya. Shh. Sorry. Drew trekked up the mountain looking for signs of a yeti. He looked to the left. He looked to the right. He looked up. He looked down. Aha! Now I've got you, Mr. Yeti the Abominable Snowman. I need a giant net so I can capture him. A netty for the yeti. <laughs> With his net in hand, Drew followed the tracks. Hey, the footprints stop here. That must mean... Ah! Ah! Drew pulled himself together and cast his Yeti net. Gotcha! The hunters came running. Hey, good job, kid. You got him. Now we'll take him to our science lab so we can experiment on him. Ooh. You mean to see why he's so mean and why he's always eating snow leopards? Yetis don't eat snow leopards, kid. They're not dangerous at all. They're like giant teddy bears. Drew thought fast. Being mean to animals is bad. Giant teddy bears are good. Drew looked at the Yeti. There was an <laughs> abominably big snow tear rolling down his furry Yeti cheeks. The Yeti is not the bad guy. You're the bad guys. You probably hurt the baby snow leopards too. Yeah, we're actually evil mad scientists. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, Drew had a brand new mission. I'm the stupendous stupendous and I'll save the Yeti. Drew pulled out his penultimate and began to draw. Get your hands off of us, kid. Yeah, let go. Stretch your arms, activate. Whoa! Drew's arms zoomed way out Whoa! till the hunters were dangling over the side of the mountain. Do you promise to leave the Yetis alone? We, we promise. promise! And do you promise you'll never hurt another animal as long as you live? Yes! yes. Call me sir. Yes, yes sir. sir! Drew, set them down at the base of the mountain. <laughs> I can see your bold spot. <laughs> Stretch your arms, deactivate. Drew helped the captured Yeti out of his net. The Yeti grabbed Drew and gave him an abominably oh. huge snow hug. Oh no, more hunters? The Yeti shook his head and smiled. It was his Yeti family. There was Mom Yeti and three little Yeti kids. And to top it off, they had a pet baby snow leopard. Take care of the other animals up here. Okay, guys? I gotta get back to school. I was supposed to be in the bathroom this whole time. Drew flew back to cool school. Sorry. Finally, I've been waiting forever. The end. And the moral of the story is, don't believe everything you hear about yetis, and try not to take too long in the bathroom. Someone might be waiting.